Hello, David Ryan. How are you doing? Very good, Denise. Thanks. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I um, normally we we uh, we go live on these Q and As, but I suppose it's slightly different with with uh, your one because we're pre-recording this and you're actually in Nutgrove Shopping Centre at the moment <laughs> doing a live demo. Yeah, we're well, um, I've been all over um, the place as well. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, the, uh, we never have an exact kind of address, I suppose, where you are. So we just thought this would be a better idea to, to get the Q&A. How has it been going for you there? Um, here in Nutgrove, that's been great. Yeah. I've, I've loved actually painting with people walking by, especially young people. They, they have a great reaction to it. So that's actually been a lot of fun. I thought it might be a little bit frustrating, but it's the opposite. It's been very motivating. Really, really? enjoyed it. Oh, okay. that's great. Yeah, because some artists find it a, 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 yeah, a bit of pressure when somebody's looking at every every uh, kind of paintbrush stroke you're doing. But it's yeah. great that you kind of you, you've uh, really absorbed that type of atmosphere and you embraced it. Yeah, I love it. I'll do it again. Definitely. <laughs> so tell us about how, um, how you started as an artist, because you I mean, you're fairly new to us. You're only with us. We launched you last year in Nook Grove. Um, so yeah, how did it all begin? Did you know you were an artist as a young child? God, yeah, I'd always been drawing and, and making things ever since I was very young, all kinds of different things, even into electronics and that. But um, professionally, it only really, really properly started about three years ago, I'd say, when I was in the squats. And I had been painting, I'd just been decorating some of the different houses and that. And um, a lot of the guys were doing different charity gigs for whatever they could. Some people were going abroad to Calais and Dunkirk and that. And I was looking at my paintings thinking, well, maybe this is a way that I could help to raise money. It might be more proactive than me going over there. But some of those guys are very highly skilled, you know. And I didn't want to be taking up beds and taking up food over in a refugee camp. So mm. I started trying to paint as, as good as I could. And then uh, kept it up, kept gathering work, trying to keep gathering and gathering it until I felt ready to start approaching places. Jeez, it's amazing. So, but I, is your family creative or was this in the blood? Um, yeah, no, my brother has, my brother's a master's in fine art. He's, he used to paint a lot. He passed away there quite recently, unfortunately. And oh. my dad, I only found out recently, my dad used to paint when he was young as well. I didn't know that though, until recently as well. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so have you had any form of training in, in art college or have you done any classes? No. You're completely no, no, no. Yeah, I, I went to a portfolio course once to think about going to art college, but I ended up doing a work experience in special effects in uh, Ardmore Studios, and I was enjoying that too much, and they wanted to keep me on there. So I just left the, the, the portfolio course and went and did uh, special effects for a couple of years. Gosh. Yeah, no, and people don't realise, but you paint on breadboards. Have you always used that? I've always used all kinds of different things. I mean, walls and just bits of... Bits of wood, a, bit of board, a lot of canvas as well, of course. Um, but but always just whatever I can get my hands on. It's usually because I'm I've been going around different houses ever since I was in the late teens, and um, just decorating them, just put pictures on the walls or to give gifts to people. So it's always been whatever I could get. Yeah. Wow, it, I know I'm really impressed with your your the little paint jars you have as well like you you're quite a low maintenance artist <laughs> very much i need to be able to move you know i need to be able to travel and set up and take yeah. down quickly so. and i need to be able to keep things safe as well that's a big part of it it's been able to gather everything quite quick and move off yeah how do you, yeah how do you do that with with large paintings then do you but with the large ones i don't it's just the breadboards the, the one behind me there i don't know if you can see it that was that's the only painting i've ever done something that size Oh, it's fabulous. I mean, and every single piece is from a life experience, isn't it? More or less. The vast majority of them are, yeah, definitely. They're all uh, mostly squats around Dublin. And uh, all memories. And so they're real, actual events. Oh, there's a huge amount went on. Yeah, God, the stories are many <laughs> years it is, years It's of kind of like your diary, isn't it? Uh, very much, yeah, it really is. And a lot of people, actually, a lot of friends that I've met through the years in, in that community, they appreciate it for the same reason. They, they kind of look at them and it brings them back as well. So it's good for that too. Yeah, I was going to say, like, what is the feedback from from uh, your friends in that community? Yeah, they love it. They love, they love seeing the paintings. Um, there's a, a diverse range of politics in there. So everybody's not as picky as you might imagine. But that is something that does kind of bring them together. They all they all love to see the images. Make them very happy. 
And what, what fascinates me as well is these are all kind of creative. So like you were mentioning in one of your paintings that so you that, like there's someone doing a puppet show in the, the background background. Yeah, that's so it. It's 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 really nice to document that, isn't it? Oh, heavily. I mean, if you consider, like, I do the paint and the photographer or else I would have taken the image. And then what the image is of, there's usually a lot of graffiti, there's usually a lot of stuff in the background that a lot of other people have come together to put together in whatever way it might be. It might just be chairs or a piece mm -hmm. of graffiti or something like that. But there's a lot more going on to build the image, is what I mean, in terms of theatre shows and puppet shows or poetry or smoke and word nights or whatever it might be. It could be um, water tests or something like that isn't <laughs> and and see the piece behind me like are you tempted to ever add your own graffiti or is is it oh. just what you see that on the wall definitely yeah no i often play with little parts of graffiti or i'll add something in that that was happening around that time often yeah so there's secret messages in some of them is there <laughs> definitely, yeah there really is all over them <laughs> So how do you start a piece then? You, do you draw it out and, or do you just get stuck right into it? A technical draw, um, thanks to, that was uh, when I was back in um, a construction course years ago. So I technical draw out the painting. And as I've gotten better and better, I'll use less points and less lines and just go into it more. That's how, yeah. Wow. Then, uh, you have a few pieces there. I can just see uh, you have three pieces on the go in, in Nutgrove there this week. Yeah. So... Yeah, is that how you always have worked? Just definitely. Yeah, I've got, I've got another four or five on the go, dotted around the city as well, in other places, and a few oils as well. Actually, I have to. Um, I'm always moving. You know, well, I suppose recently it's been harder to move. Yeah. But, you know, that's been the way. I have to move around, and um, whatever painting I have, or whatever colors I have, even sometimes yeah. like where I go or what painting I work on. I well, yeah. I mean, that's why you know. I I was going to ask you there as well. How how has lockdown affected you and your work? How which day? How has lockdown affected you and your work? Because uh, you yeah, said you're only moving around the city, so did you kind of come to a standstill in March? I had to, yeah. I mean, I had to go back to my parents um, initially. That was kind of uh, difficult. So I mean, it has been difficult. I've been obviously I couldn't be bouncing around so much. So there's been a few friend houses that I've been able to stay in um, for a longer time period, and then um, the work kind of dropped a bit. To be honest, you think it would have picked up but it actually didn't. They kind of got into a few other different things. Um, so I guess I'm getting back into it now, getting used to the new environment. Mm. And so, so how do you leave, do you leave pieces in different places that you stay in? How, and just hope for the best that they're still there? <laughs> yeah, I know they would be, they would be safe. I mean, I trust the people that are there and they would, yeah. if anything, they, they take the painting with them. Everything's um, okay. a tight knit community and beyond the politics. <laughs> just in terms of the day to day, like if there is a place that's under threat, people will pull together and they'll look after your stuff. Nobody's ever to ever stolen a painting yet. Oh, only once out of a shopping centre, actually, years and years and years ago. Oh, don't, 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 say, don't say it was Nutgrove. <laughs> no, not Nutgrove. No, it's done Leary, actually. But um, no, not in the squats. Everything on the squats did very good, very safe. Right. More or less. That's good. So, what was this? Was this a show in Delirious Shopping Centre? Yeah, it was. Again, it was, it was years and years and years ago. Um, Karen Harper was the person saying we organised it. She was really good. She had yeah. she was very um, inspirational. But she did um, Ireland, the Dublin's smallest art gallery, I think it was. And I had a few painters in. And then apparently somebody ran out of the shopping centre with one of the paintings. <laughs> and then some of the security footage to see if I could recognise the person. Oh, you can take that as a compliment. <laughs> What else could what I do? What type of work were you doing back then? Say again, sorry? What, what type of work? I mean, this work you're doing now is clearly on your life experiences and where you stay and, you know. But what was yeah. what was the work like when you were showing in Dunleary? Yeah, well, when I was younger, my dad worked in telecommunications, so he travelled around quite a lot. And I'd been in a few countries when I was young now, before 10. So um, a lot of these images I used to do, they were usually pretty pictures, like nice sunrises and sunsets, generally, or just really nice natural scenes. Wow. Like that. Yeah, I love that. Gosh, I'd love to see that. It's so totally, yeah. totally different to what you're doing now. It's <laughs> polar opposite, yeah. Do you have a preference? What, are you happier what you're doing now, I presume? 
I'm very happy with what I'm doing now. I really enjoy it. Um, it looks great and it's very forgiving as well. It's a lot of fun painting the textures that you see in these crumbling walls or in the, in the ground that's covered in bits of stones and bits of things. Um, but I still, I mean, I really like the, the nice images of nature as well. I, I love a good sky or clouds or sunrises and that. Um, yeah, because you know, the light is so important, especially in that piece you're doing now. I mean, the light is yeah. so striking. A lot of fun. There's a lot of colour going on in around those glares. And that's what's so much fun to get in at, because it's, it's really hard to kind of differentiate between the different colours. And there's so much going on in such mm. a tiny place. Just outside of the white going into the black, it goes into pinks and reds and blues and yellows and oranges and everything. And it's uh, it's difficult, but it's a lot of fun trying to put that together. And tell us about that, your, your current work. So this, the, the, the piece you're working on, that was where you were staying in the, just before lockdown, was it? Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, this is our Christmas there, January last there this year. And I was trying to finish the, the big painting behind me of the refugees. So these guys gave me um, snares in their warehouse in Dublin. And uh, it was a good spot. The floor was covered in pigeon shit, but I didn't mind that too much. Um, I got a really big flow. Okay. And ask them, to, can I come in and paint? Is Or do you know them? I knew them. Like I just said I needed somewhere to paint. And could I use there? And of course, they felt very happy enough. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so how long did you stay there for? Only about a month. It, it okay. seemed to get political after a while. And I think it is now to this day. I don't, I don't actually go back there very often. It's a bit too um, too polarised, if you know what I mean. It's too on either side mm. of the politics. Gosh. So do you feel that in every different place that you visit, you produce different types of work? Does it reflect... On the canvas. It's, it's all kind of one and the same. I mean, all these different places are, they're, they're very connected, you know, and there's a lot of uh, recurring themes. So I don't really differentiate. They, they kind of all go together, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. No, that's but true. Maybe, yeah. I, I haven't been doing it that long, so I guess maybe as the years go on, um, that, that question might be more unthinkable. I'm sure it will actually, yeah. I mean, I can see the, the difference from the work from last year to the work you're working on now it's yeah it's, yeah it's definitely yeah progressing into you just you're getting there's more detail in the work as well and, getting finer, and I think getting more confident as well because I remember when we first went out to you you were living on in a place on Pier Street and um I think when we said your work's amazing you were quite taken back by it <laughs> you were like really been very modest about it and I think now when like uh, we brought your work to London which was really well received and unfortunately we didn't we got the work to New York but we did we got it back again obviously with COVID we couldn't show it but I think that helped you as well that you know a few red stickers has given you a little bit more confidence about the work. Definitely yeah hugely I mean I, I yeah I'm my own worst critic you know and I, I, I just <laughs> understand. I just see all the bits that I <laughs> It's nice though. It's a nice trait to have, I think. <laughs> so, so what, what, what are you focusing on now for the next few months? Are you just going to stick stick to, to what you're doing, or are you going to try new mediums or new themes? Yeah, that's a good question. I, really, what I need to do is go and find new images and and maybe even new stories, which I'm sure I will. There's a couple of things coming together more around around the country, around Ireland. So um, I'll have to see where the wind takes me. To be honest. But yeah, definitely, mm -hmm. there will be a progression for sure, definitely. I remember yeah. you were saying you were going to go over to the Parisian squats. Did that happen? Did you get, you were yeah. you were going to look at some new works from that? Yeah, I never did. I was very excited. I had flights booked twice to go. And then the first set of flights were cancelled. And then the second time around, a friend of mine that I was going to see, her mum, um, got diagnosed with COVID. So I didn't go then because she wasn't okay. around. Two of them weren't around. But it's hopefully something that will happen. It's just with the COVID, it, it really um, put a stop on that. I'm very excited. I really want to go over there and, and see all of that. Amazing buildings and amazing communities, much more so than in Dublin. Not that there's anything wrong with Dublin, but the European community is, is much more entrenched, much bigger and broader, and um, they're much more serious, really. But um, would, you, would you work from other people's uh, images, or do you like to take your own photography? A bit of both. It's, it's all down to the image. I mean, if I see an image I like, then I want to paint it, and that's it. So 
uh, it'll happen often where I see other people's photographs that I just love, and I do. I love going through people's work. I'll, I'll fly through thousands and thousands of images. Right. Um, I love taking my own photos as well, and I do enjoy that. It's really all down to the image. It's the image that gets me excited. Yeah, I was looking, I was looking at you how you, which you worked from your iPad, and um, yeah, it's quite. You, you do all. Have you always been that? And you, you instead of. No, no, not all. I only got that recently thanks to being with yourself in the doorway gallery. I was able to get that. But before then, it would have been photographs or it would have been just off the computer screen or something like that, which wasn't the best. I mean, those scenes aren't, aren't great for the colours and the depth and things. But um, I tried to use a mix as well, you know, even different software I'll use just to try to bring out different colours or different details that sometimes get lost in the contrast. So, uh, yeah. It's kind of changing and developing slowly. I think I'll stick for a while. I'm not even print off images, to be honest, but you know, um, close up. And how would you be if someone commissioned you? Do you? Would that be a challenge, or would you say no to commission? I'd be happy enough. I mean, it, I'd say it'd be a challenge, just as any other. But I might be a little bit picky about again about the image. Like I'm very picky about the image. I'd strongly encourage anyone to really think about what images they, they want to have done or to try to get a, a huge amount of images even just to try to find a really really good image because it's all about the image you know the paint does bring and bring things out but fundamentally the image is what will bring it together so you're going to take part in our christmas show as well yeah. <laughs> is so, that yeah. going to be a challenge i mean that is that it's all small pieces for uh, 20 by 25 centimeters have you ever worked that size before? I have definitely, yeah, but worked even smaller. But um, no, I think I'll be all right. I'll just have to, again, to go on and on and on about it, I'll just have to go and try to find new images and some photographers and go through my own old stuff and find the right pieces for that for those uh, canvases. I like to paint the sides of these deep edge canvases as well. I usually try to, yeah. I, don't put them in. I like to go around and wrap the painting. So I'm looking yeah. forward to it. I, yeah, no, I think they're going to be uh, gorgeous. So, yeah, we're going to release them early this year. Cool, yeah. take, uh, thank you so much. I really, really enjoyed uh, that. You. And uh, good luck over the next few weeks. Look forward to seeing what we do for the Christmas show. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Denise. Okay. Thank, you. Thank, you. Okay. thank you so much. Bye.